Ooga, booga, ooga, booga. Hello, boogies. Welcome back. Watching movie trailers and guessing review scores. That's a, it's a fun little series we do, isn't it? How this series works is I watch movie trailers that you guys have uh, submitted or recommended. And then based on only the trailer alone, I have to guess the review scores. Now, if I get the score correct, I get to read your submitted advice asking. So I get to interject myself into your lives? That sounds great to me. Consequence free, thank you. If I get a score wrong though, the punishment is I have to read your deep dark secrets. Usually by the end of it, I think less of you guys. So, <laughs> oh, a nose ring, I forgot nose ring, sorry. So I'm gonna put new forms down below in the description if you want to submit anything, that's where you go to do it. And with that being said, uh, let's let's watch the first trailer. One of the popular movie trailer recommendations was uh, Anyone But You, which is a, a recent rom-com that came out. It seemed to be having some success, so uh, let's watch. What did we got the trailer at 7 million views. Let's take a peek. Check out the new trailer for my new movie. My movie. It's actually my movie. Well, we'll see whose movie it is when it comes out. Check out the new trailer for our new movie, Anyone But You. Okay. Hey, head of the wedding. Of my sister? Yes, I am. Pretty long flight. Do you want anything from the front of the boat? I'm all good on creatine and smell thick and security. Nothing small about me. What the? I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's the jerk who he got with when she was on a break from Jonathan. I could never be with someone like him. Oh wait, wait, wait. So she was on a break from her boyfriend. What was the break? So that she could like get a freebie. <laughs> oh. Okay. Sorry. I'm a I'm a Jacksonville Jaguar fan. So naturally, I'm a Trevor Lawrence fan. And this guy looks like my favorite quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. He's not though. So I hate him. They're gonna ruin our wedding. Sorry. <laughs> okay. What's going on over there? They dated, she crushed his heart. Okay, 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 okay. What I said from the beginning, I, I think I take that back. Because uh, there's not enough of these movies anymore. There's not enough of this fluffy rom-coms. I think they're getting, I think they're coming back in vogue. There's just, there's like, it's, they're stupid. We know they're stupid. But everyone goes in with that understanding. My ex, Jonathan. My parents have been trying to get us back together. Maybe we should just tell everyone we're together. <laughs> This is a this is a fake dating story that I have seen enough. Is there no? Is everything just derivative off of other things? Can we not just think of anything new? She sees her with me. She wants what she can't have. And the problem is that we know where it ends up too. Like if if they do a twist ending where they don't end up together, oh, that could change the review score. You know, I still think about that night we spent together. It's still pretty amazing. They're gone. Show's over. Oh my God. Do you have a mole or something on your back? Oh, 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 oh my god, it's a spider. Do you have a mole on your butt? Her hand is like underneath his underwear, I think. So I, when she found something, I was like, uh oh, if he doesn't have a mole, uh, okay, okay, how do I feel? Because at some points, it looks like it has the charm of a dumb romance story, but at other times, it looks like just forced, you know? And I have to make the choice, okay? I know this did well in the box office. Would people have seen it if it was really bad? I don't think so. Six, one, percent. <laughs> it's been a while since I made one of these videos. I forgot how to do these. I'll figure it out one day. All right, if you guys want to guess along in the comment section, feel free. Anyone but you. Oh, I get a window. I forgot the window part. So I'm going to give myself just a start. We'll do uh, an, uh, a 12% window. So I get from 55 to uh, 67%. What's the final score? Anyone but you? 55. Oh. <sighs> If I didn't do a 12%, I was thinking between 10 and 12% and I went 12 just because I'm a baby and I don't like losing. The lesson there, of course, is uh, always be a baby about things. Okay. Hi, Dylan. Love you and your advice. Well, it's, it's easy to love something that's perfect. So I was in a relationship for over two years with the guy I met during middle school. I started to like him in ninth grade and started to date in 11th. I'm a freshman in college now. He was smart and decided not to get scammed, unlike me. Smart man. I like him. Went to a trade school for music production, which was a six month program. Because we were going to different schools, we wouldn't see each other like we did in high school and we would have to plan to see each other, which to me, would it be hard since our schools were only 10 minutes apart. I kept telling him we should set a day where we go on a date for a little. He kept saying he didn't know how much free time he would have since his program was intense. Well, one week before school started, uh, he called her and he said uh, they should go on a six month break because he didn't want the responsibility of having to be a boyfriend and felt he needed to focus on school without feeling guilty for not giving me the attention and time I deserve. Now it is currently March and he graduates at the end of the month and I know I need to talk to him about our relationship. I need to decide if I should tell him I want to stay or not. I love him still and my heart wants to be with him, 
but I know what he did sucks. Do I give him a second chance if he asks for it? Or do I stay friends? Or what? I don't know how to leave someone I've loved for so long. You know, sometimes there's like a long uh, leeway between uh, when I ask for submissions and then make the next video. So some people ask for like advice that they need like that day. And then I, and then I cover it like uh, two months later. <laughs> this is what I'm actually on time for. I think it would be valid to say like, hey, I'm going into an intense program. I need some time away. But it wasn't, it doesn't seem like it was proposed to you in a uh, like, what do you think of this idea? It was proposed to you as like, hey, tough news for you. I'm breaking up with you. Sorry. We'll figure it out maybe in six months. <laughs> and the problem is it sends all the wrong signals. If you're just like, yeah, we'll get back together. It tells him subconsciously, like if at any point I want to take a break or if I just want to move on, should just be there waiting for me. I can take six months off. Maybe next year I could go do something for a year. If he wants you back, he has to earn it over a long period of time. I'm not saying put him through hell. I'm saying like at least months of him having to try to woo you back. Make him show you that he really wants to be with you. Cause uh, based on his actions, you know the, the saying, if he wanted to, he would. That's not always true. I think people overuse that phrase because people have a lot going on in their lives. It's not just like, I'm dedicated my whole life to this relationship. But in this case, it does seem like if he wanted to, he could have. It almost makes them respect you less as a person. If you're just willing to, to wait around uh, when they do you dirty. So I would say, uh, yeah, definitely definitely move on. And if he shows over the course of time that he he wants to, uh, to make the relationship work, he's willing to put that effort in, then I think you could entertain getting back together. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, an up, it's an uphill battle that he needs to fight. You can't help him. That's my take on it. Anyone in the comment section, feel free to, to chime in. Thank you for submitting. Again, if you want to submit your own secret or your own advice down in the comment section. I saw another one. Uh, what was it called? Care of. Guys, I asked you to recommend films, not today's sponsor. Have you or are you currently taking any vitamins? Do you even know what vitamins you need? Care of can help. They have you fill out a short questionnaire. They'll get to know your lifestyle and your health goals, and they're gonna curate vitamins that are perfect for you. For example, what do I need to continue being the lean, mean fighting machine I am? A multivitamin, omega-3 fish oils, and then a couple of things for uh, focus. That's something I, I can struggle with, is focusing on things. And they make it simple. They organize it in these nice little packages. They're super convenient to grab. Pop it out once a day. If you're ever on the go, it's nice and easy just to slap that in. And they deliver once a month. I do wish Care Of would address me by my formal name, Mr. Booga. But uh, I guess they think we're on a, a first name basis. They're gonna make up for it though by offering 50% off your first order. You can use the code and <laughs> check this out. Ooga Booga 50. Cause the first 49 must have been taken. Here's the QR code. But you know what? There's something about typing out Ooga Booga 50. That's just feels right. It would have really messed me up if it was Ooga Booga 2, because I'd be like, hey, who was Ooga Booga 1? <laughs> you know what I mean? But Ooga Booga 50, oh, because it's 50% off. Oh my, oh, okay. 50% off your first order, Ooga Booga 50. I get it now. They're gonna watch us back and be like, this is the, this is the guy we partner with? This idiot? Do we have any multivitamins that fix stupidity? No, we don't. <laughs> Sorry, Karov. Ooga Booga 50. Thank you to Karov for sponsoring. Next trailer. I saw another one. Uh, what was it called? Miller's Girl. I saw that one recommended uh, a number of times. Oh, that's, uh, uh, Saturday? 5.8 million views two months ago. Okay. Oh yeah, in theaters January 26th. Ooh, a January release. You don't know, a lot of times studios release movies in January because, uh, no one goes to the movies in January. So they try to like hide bad movies that they made. They're like, ooh, this isn't good. Let's put it out in January. No one's going to the theater anyways. I'm Mr. Miller. I'm assuming that you got one of these before. I read the whole list. Well, there's 12 books on the list. <laughs> Party hard. <laughs> She's a nerd. Girls that read a lot are, um, they're either introverted or psychopaths. It's one of the two. I'm 18. Languishing in the wilds of nowhere, Tennessee. Don't you get scared walking through those woods? I'm the scariest thing in there. <laughs> yeah, she's a psycho. Okay, this is confirmed. I don't need to guess the plot. That's not what this series is about, but I am assuming uh, she's gonna seem like a frail girl, but she's actually gonna torture him. There's some event in the past that she's getting revenge for. Are you offering me a special treatment, Mr. Miller? Well, uh... <laughs> is she pretty? Oh, well, she's talented. Damn, even worse. But the words fell away. Uh, the, the artsy shots of like the beetle and the smoking. If you pull it off well, it's cool, otherwise it feels pretentious. It's a it's a very thin line. If you don't read about this, I'll have to fail you. I dare you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hate that shot. That that feels try hard. The close up on the eye. You're my student, and I'm your teacher. That's all. You're gonna ruin his life. Hmm. In your own words, how did it start? <laughs> there are wait, 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 what? There are complex themes that appear in this film. To access the resources. 
You need to go to Lionsgate's website. I can almost promise there's promotional material. So this is the site. This is the site that you that it leads you to. <laughs> where's the Where's the resources? Hey, if you uh if you're struggling with anything, just visit our website where we bombard you with uh extra promotional materials from our film. <laughs> oh God, you know what this film reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of um the guy from How I Met Your Mother and then uh the Scarlet Witch. Is it Elizabeth Olsen? They have a film. That it not not quite as dark as this. Similar themes though, and I'm wondering if that's if that's coloring because that was a that was a pretty good film. That's kind of coloring my uh, interpretation of this a little bit. Based on the fact that it was released in January, and some of the I was talking about that thin line. I'm gonna go ahead and, and guess uh, twenty nine percent. We're closing the window a little bit. Every time we get it right, we're gonna close it a little bit. Every time we get it wrong, we open it a little bit. Twenty four to thirty four percent. That... <sighs> Come on, Miller's girl, Miller's girl. An ex, an exact. You have just witnessed history for the first time in this series. I have nailed it to the number. Window? Who needs a window? I feel like there should be a special something if I get it exact. I feel like I should open up some submissions, but like it, it's for like your only your best compliments. And then if I get it exact, I get to read one of your compliments. For now, we'll go ahead and do some more advice. Hello, Dylan. First off, I love your videos. Well, I guess we are doing a little bit of the compliment, aren't we? My guy best friend and I, we are both 17, turning 18. I have been friends for a few years now, and it's been amazing. He drives me places, we buy each other food, and we basically chat every day. Recently, I develop feelings, but I know he doesn't think of me this way. Any advice on how to get myself out of the friend zone with him? I'd, I'd mostly be curious about why you think or why you know that he doesn't think of you that way. I'm gonna keep my advice pretty general for uh, for friend zoners. <laughs> if you two are friends, what is what is your friendly physical contact like? Uh, sometimes when you're friends, you just kind of like, you know, you might punch him on the shoulder. But if you want to send like a more flirty feminine signal, then you might want to, uh, instead of doing a punch, you might just want to do a light little shove. And then linger. Nothing, nothing beats a good linger, okay? Stop. And then that little extra second, that sends like a billion signals, okay? And you could do the Hail Mary as well, which is just like confidently say, hey, you know what? Recently, I have I think I started to have feelings for you. I know it's a little awkward, but stop being so hot. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, if you could play it off with humor. If you're in this community, you probably know humor to a certain degree, right? Did I just compliment myself so hard? <laughs> if you've watched me, you probably picked up some, some comedic cues. And then if he, like, prepare yourself for what he would say if he says no, and be like, all right, you know what? <laughs> I changed my mind. I hate you anyways. <laughs> I think just being brazen, being bold, serves people so well. Like, being in those uncomfortable moments, I, most people try to avoid them. But if you can get through them, learn a lot about yourself, and uh, you also come across really well. Oh, Mean Girls. Oh, that was being rebooted. Did that come out? Men girls. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh my god. 11 million. They remade this. They remade it. Why? Oh, hell no! This isn't your mother's mean girls. Why? Is it crazier? Move. Hey, PG 13, please. What was that? Oh, Lord, it's the Queen Bee. Regina George. Don't look her in the eye! Well, uh, when I saw. Those uh, Tina Fey and that principal guy, they were in the original, weren't they? I thought this would be like a uh, like a sequel. Unless Regina George, so full of herself, grew up and then named her child Regina George, which would be an incredible joke. We're concerned you're either doing drugs or having a toilet baby. Ew. We as women have to be able to support each other. Get in, loser. Wait, I'm so confused. I'm so confused. What is this? Katie. You're never gonna no, that's Katie. Okay, so that's Katie. So this is a... Oh, it's confusing. Mom, go make snacks. For sure. For sure, Regina. Yeah. Do you like gum? That's not somewhere I turn pretty guy, is it? Oh my god, it is. I'm gonna be honest. Uh... I saw a late night clip. He had mentioned like, I think working at Staples or something for years. And oddly, I felt a kinship to him because I worked at Office Max for years. And then I, I felt a little bit bad because I might've trashed him a little bit. <laughs> but I think I want to root for him now because uh, I think we, we share similar experiences. Katie pushed her. Regina really should be lifting through her glutes. Uh, okay, okay. So it's like, it's Mean Girls for the TikTok era. <laughs> okay. Uh, it doesn't look not fun. On uh, January. Oh, it's another January release. Oh. Was this a straight to digital release or did this go to the theaters? I didn't hear anything about it, too. I, oh, that's not that's not good. 34. 
So I immediately messed up, and then I thought, okay, well, I could fix this. So I overcorrected, and then I was like, oh, I'm overcorrecting. So then I overcorrected the opposite way, and then I just got in a loop of, like, overcorrecting back and forth. It was like a war in my head for, like, two, two full seconds. And now we're at an 8% window. So now we only have, uh, 30 to 38. Color me overconfident, but you know what? No window. I'm on a hot streak. Come on, baby. Mean Girls, 34% exactly. Come on, Mean Girls, 34 <laughs> if you think about it, if you double my score, I'm almost correct. You were the reason I broke up with my boyfriend. This one's fun. I was dating someone for two years, and for some reason, they hated the fact that I watched your videos. He didn't allow me to subscribe to you, watch your videos, or follow you on any social media. One day last July, I finally had enough and ended it. There were obviously other things, but you were one of the big ones. That's what she said. All right, thank you for sharing the secret, and it makes me feel good because uh, that sounds toxic as hell. Was it one of the videos where my shirt was like really open and he was like, oh, okay. I can't compete with his level of pastiness. That's where the envy comes from. Yeah, if you're in a relationship with somebody who uh, tries to limit what you can and can't see or, you know, the things you interact with, I'd definitely take a second look at that relationship. Now, relationships are good with compromise, so you should listen to what your partner wants, but uh, demanding people not watch certain YouTubers or even TV shows and stuff, that's really toxic. Oh my God, that's worse. Oh my God. Oh my God. I thought that one wasn't short enough, so I started I started looking for another one and I just come across like some of the most disturbing. Like I'm talking like it's gonna demonetize the entire video. I much prefer guys who are shorter and younger than me. Not sure why. I don't really understand the hype with tall and older guys. They make me feel inferior. I, I get what you're saying um, in a way because I, when I lived out in Los Angeles, I had a couple um, experiences around, I guess like celebrities. And it's hard to idolize people who are like five, nine when you're six foot four. Like I'm looking down at them. I, I feel, I'm so much bigger than them, I feel like. I, I share your feelings in a way. Don't fix this. If this is a problem within yourself, don't fix it because a lot of short guys, they feel down. And we need as many female soldiers out there to uh, scoop them up, you know? I mean, scoop them up off the market. Don't like scoop them up in your hands because that'll, that'll make them feel really small. <laughs> All right, back to another trailer. We have two more left. Okay, so I've seen Society of the Snow. Just based on the, the thumbnail, it feels like something that you guys wouldn't be into, but it's been recommended a ton. Let's go ahead, give it a shot, maybe. Okay, people are dethawing. Oh god, oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. Stranded on a... Oh god, oh no, in the Arctic? Oh my god. Pasa cuando el mundo te abandona. Oh, that's my nightmare. Cuando no tenés comida y... Are oh, they going to eat each other? Oh my god. Comer qué? Yeah, oh, cannibalism? Oh, this looks so intense. Oh, it's a sports team. Oh, okay, rugby team. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I have a feeling I'm on my, my score. Now, uh, again, using context clues, because uh, the number of times you guys uh, recommended also a December release, that spells good things. Uh, there was a sound effect. <laughs> ah, so something about that noise right there. It made me think like, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna nail the subtle aspects of this film. <laughs> Based on true events, it would be disrespectful for critics to give us a poor score. If I were to guess without the context clues, I would probably say somewhere in like the mid 70s. But I actually think I'm gonna go 90. Let's go 90, it's flat 90, because I got the window. We'll go 10%, <laughs> we'll go 10% window. So uh, 85 to 95. Sorry, I got a little angry there. <laughs> Let's see if my anger rises or falls here. 85 to 95%. What are the odds of two? Oh my God. Not only did you watch history for the first time ever, me hitting a score exact, but that same video, I hit another score exact. <laughs> You're the best. You're the best. Who cares about my percentage size? The number is what matters. All right. And twice out of four advice. Here's kind of a general one. What is in your opinion, the best way to be kind to yourself? I'm awful at it yet. Give great advice to others, but never use it. Well, that last part, if you're good at giving advice to other people, then you would be good at giving advice to yourself. So what I would do if I were you, like separate yourself from your situation and I would just write down what advice you would give to someone who was in your exact shoes, you know? And then follow what you wrote, okay? And then follow your own advice and then just commit to whatever it is that you decided to write down. Actually, there is one I saw. 
that I maybe would be good to do because I got it exact. Instead of me giving advice, I think you guys should give advice. I saw this one because I knew I couldn't answer it. Uh, this is kind of a nebulous question, but any advice on how to deal with imposter syndrome, I feel like it affects nearly every aspect of my life, academically, work, aspirations, relationships. How do you work through your doubts? I can't answer that because I don't doubt myself. <laughs> Signs of imposter syndrome, afraid of being outed as a fraud, uh, unworthy of success, dismissing positive feedback, distrusting of others, blaming accomplishments on luck. You guys in the comment section are not obligated because I got the score right. You have to chime in on your thoughts about imposter syndrome, okay? So if I'm understanding this correctly, it, it feels like imposter syndrome is self-consciousness about how others perceive you versus how you perceive yourself. So if you are having a lot of success outwardly, you think that other people are gonna be like, oh no, you're not actually as good as your accomplishments say you are. That presupposes that there's uh, an objective sense and that you are not up to that objective and everyone who's witnessing your accomplishments is incorrect in their assessment. I gotta be honest, I, I, I don't think I can relate to that. I'm gonna leave that one to you guys just because, uh, yeah, like I said, if I if I, if I I get too deeply into this, I I'm, I think it would just be me talking. Oh, Wonka, ah, Wonka trailer. It's, uh, so many movies just like happen. But let's watch this. Timothy Chalamet is Wonka. I've spent the past seven years traveling the world perfecting my craft. You see, I'm something of a magician. So quiet up and listen and down. Nope. Scratch that. Reverse it. I got I got to figure out quickly if um like the the Gene Wilder version if that was just because like it's a childhood thing and you you watch that when you're younger and um, there's a lot of whimsy to it. Am I too old now to have like that <laughs> that that lens? I'll figure it out as I go here. Many people have come here to sell chocolate. They've all been crushed by the chocolate cartel. Oh. It's like a, a prequel? I thought this was just Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, it's the history of... Oh, interesting. And you can't sell chocolate without a shop. No daydreaming. What are we gonna do, Willy? Slave labor? Is that why he, there's a shot of him going to the forest before? He's like, oh, I gotta figure out how to make this business work. What if I get a bunch of immigrants and lock them in my factory and make them make me chocolate? Hmm, brilliant idea. A group of people defying the laws of gravity. Gentlemen of the gallery gourmet. It does have charm and visual charm. And I like the coloring of this. This is gonna be the greatest chocolate shot the world has ever seen. So you're the funny little man. Oh my god! He keeps him in a jar? I was making the jokes before. But he, he this is terrible. It's like he's a bug. And he's gonna be like, hey, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna make me chocolate, bitch. Oh, I don't think I wanna hear that. Too late. I've started dancing now. Once we've started, we can't stop. Okay. okay. I, I'm gonna buy into the charm. I'm gonna buy into the charm. Now, it is not what I think of the film, but it's what I believe critics think of the film. And I know that there are a lot of cynical critics out there. Gotta start with the number eight. And, uh, 80... Two. Percent. I gave up trying. 82 percent? Oh, do I... I do I need a window? <laughs> I don't think I do. 82 percent! Okay, exactly. Oh my god! <laughs> There's no way! <laughs> ah! I swear to god I am not cheating. I- this is the craziest. Oh my god. I think every time I make a bad symbol, I get it correct. Maybe that's the secret. Wow! Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think there were like a couple more secrets that I was like, I should probably hit these, uh, but I can't now. Maybe this is uh, a <laughs> this is divine intervention. Maybe the next person who is asking advice, I'm meant to give them advice, and it's gonna change their lives. I think I have a yeast in fact. Okay, that's not divine intervention. You can figure that out. WebMD. Hi, hi. So I am having a little bit of a breakdown and I don't really feel like there's anyone who really will or can listen. So I'm going to ask you about it. I am an 18 year old girl. I'm currently uh, going to college. I know, leave me alone. And I think it's mostly my way of avoiding actually knowing what I'm doing with my life. I know I like writing and I've actually written a uh, first draft of a book. Throw it in our faces. I'm able to write a book. I get it. I get it. I get it. I understand that there's a nature of pursuing a career as an author that requires some waiting time before you actually get published and make any money. I'm really scared of putting all my eggs in the running basket and finding that I won't make any money or find that I don't even like literature as much as I think I do right now. I have a personal goal to be further educated and generally be knowledgeable about a subject because I just really like learning. I got a rather good scholarship to go to a college that makes it so that it is really the least expensive time for me to go to, to a good school. And I don't want to pass up on that opportunity. But I also understand that I'll never get these years of my life back. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, slow down. You're 18. You are doing probably the thing that you should be doing. You have like this severe FOMO, but you're following a path that um, is going to give you a lot of really good experiences. And there are certain things, of course, that 
you could be doing now that you're not doing because you're going to college. But if you were doing those things instead, then you would also be missing out on the opportunities of the college life. If I want to be a writer, shouldn't I pursue that despite the fear that I'll end up broke and having to ask my parents for money? Uh, you seem to be fairly successful with an unconventional career choice. Yeah, as of... <laughs> aspiring author myself. Hey, what do you do for work? I'm an aspiring author. <laughs> what do you think I should do? Do you have any general advice or things I should consider before making a decision? Thank you in advance and thank you for your videos. You inspire me to continue writing. And I read Red Rising on your recommendation and it was so good. Thank you so much. I I really want to reach out to Pierce Brown. I'm a little bit nervous, the, the author of Red Rising, just because I've talked up, up that series so much. Anyways, that's not the conversation, but I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. What I said about you being in your head, I think you really are. Um, and I think if you're living constantly thinking about all the, the things that you could be doing that you're not, you're just, you're never going to find satisfaction in the moment and you need to live in the moment. If you're able to go to college for cheap and you're enjoying it and it sounds like you are and it's uh, fulfilling your life goals of, of being a more educated person, then you should be doing what you're, you're doing. And I think that's the exact right choice for you. However, if something feels wrong in your gut, uh, then follow your gut. But don't be led astray by like, oh, I should be doing this instead of this because there's always something that you could be doing that you're not currently. What I would say about unconventional careers. I think the reason this was successful in the way that other things weren't successful, like when I moved up to Los Angeles, I didn't put the effort in because it, I didn't feel like that important to me or as important as it should be. But when I started Dill Will Not Participate, I literally would work probably like 14 hours a day for six to seven days a week. <laughs> it was a challenge every day that I felt very good undertaking and it felt very fulfilling. I think if you could find a career path that gives you that same feeling, especially an unconventional career path, then it's it's time worth investing. But what I will say about writing specifically is, uh, uh, this is <laughs> tried and true almost across almost every author. There's a few exceptions, but um, your first work is always going to be uh, very bad. Pierce Brown, who wrote Red Rising, I think that was his sixth novel and he was about to give up writing before, uh, before he found an agent for uh, for that story. But yeah, keep writing and then uh, keep keep getting better, you know? That's the key to the hard work, by the way. It's exciting to know where your faults are because then it feels good about getting better and fixing those areas. And it's always about constant improvement and it always feels good because Again, it's it's, a, it's like a passion. Again, feel free to leave your comments uh, on any of these posts in the comment section down below. I swear to God, I did not cheat. <laughs> Submission forms will be in the comment section, so feel free, again, to submit a trailer, submit uh, a secret, or submit advice. Love you guys, I'll see you, uh, see you again soon. <laughs>